Well, that will be the snow melted then. We're back to a rather wetter, drakier, greyer Fort William today. But isn't there something fascinating about the power of the, the snow melt thundering down the waterfall as we've just been looking at? We'll be talking about another unstoppable force in the course of our online worship today. And wherever you're joining us from, we're very glad to have you taking part in today's service. You're most welcome. And thank you for being here to share with us. In our service today, one of the things I'm going to be doing is introducing you to Rory McLeod. Rory is the new team minister who's just joined us as part of the Fort William Kilmally and Kilmany Week team. We're delighted to have him working with us and you'll get a chance to meet him as time goes on. Today in our worship, we're going to be focusing on a story where friendship and teamwork are absolutely crucial. And we begin our worship by hearing some words from Psalm 41. Happy are those who are concerned for the poor. The Lord will help them when they're in trouble. The Lord will protect them and preserve their lives. He will make them happy in the land. He will not abandon them to the power of their enemies. The Lord will help them when they're sick and will restore them to health. Be merciful to me, O Lord, and restore my health. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Praise him now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today, as part of our online worship, I'm delighted to be introducing to you Rory McLeod. Rory McLeod has just joined us as the newest member of our team, as the team minister who'll be working with us in Fort William, Kilmally and Kilmany Big. Rory, welcome. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. No, uh, looking forward to being part of the new team. I, I realise at the minute you're still uh, down in Lothian, is that right? Uh, yes, we're living um, in East Lothian, uh, just outside Haddington, in a place called Monk Craig. Right. Uh, well, we're looking forward to the time when you're able to get, uh, get, get moved up here, and we're glad to have you as part of the team, and thank you for joining in this morning. Maybe just as an introduction to members of the congregation who are watching, tell us a wee bit about yourself and your background and what brings you to be working with us in Lochaber. Um, well, background, uh, I guess two big places in my life have been Durham, uh, where my father was a history teacher, uh, and um, the Isle of Skye at Dunvegan, uh, which is our family home at a place called Sordor on the way to, down to Coral Bay. So uh, there have been huge uh, factors uh, in my growing up in my own life um, and any free time, any leave we get, uh, we certainly head back uh, to Sky. Right. So uh, looking forward to being up at North uh, and in the great part of the world with majestic scenery. Uh, to be fair, Fort William's always been a kind of passing through place, uh, but looking forward to getting to know the area better. Um, uh, I've been a church scholar minister for uh, a long time, but my experiences have been more with not so much in a parish, although I trained initially in a parish, um, then went, did school chaplaincy uh, for I guess five years um, and then headed into a military chaplaincy working in the army uh, doing a fair stint as a regular uh, and then since then backing that up with some with the opportunity to be a, a reserve army chaplain yes. so being here um, in East Lothian has been a good uh, place for being able to keep up that, the reserve chaplaincy because I'm with uh, 154 Royal Logistic Corps, the uh, yeah. transport. Mm -hmm. And then Firmland is the, the headquarters or the, the spread all over. Um, and indeed, it's uh, one of the soldiers uh, who told me proudly he was married in this amazing church in Cool. Uh, at, at Corpac, it was at where his wedding took place. Yes. Uh, but his relatives are in Cool, um, 
So he triggered off something that you know, led to this. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm not going to start any discussions about whether Army Chaplaincy is better pre preparation for Cool Corpac or Fort William. That you'll just have to find out over time. But as I say, it's great having you with us as part of the team. Uh, today I'm going to invite you to share our Bible reading with us and to read from Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 12, a passage which uh, in many ways almost looks like a scene from a deployment where uh, four friends are helping their friend in his, in his moment of need. But would you like to read the passage for us, Rory? When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around there that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front of the door, and he was speaking a word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug it through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has an authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. Thank you for that. I must admit, this is one of those stories that um, I particularly love. I know this is the first week in Lent, and in theory, the readings would have moved to something different, but I just don't, didn't want to leave this story out because it's a personal favorite of mine. Um, and I, what I love about it is the kind of cooperation in it, um, the, the, the people working together and not being beaten at the first obstacle. They kept going. Um even if they destroyed the roof, which presumably the owner of the house wouldn't have been too happy with. Indeed. I I suspect the bit of the story we don't we don't hear is the work squad afterwards fixing it. <laughs> Good. Anyway, thank the you for that. Great commitment break. from the four of them. Uh, uh, sorry, great commitment from the four of them. Um, yes. The very lengths much that so. they went to make sure ran, and we don't even hear their names. It's interesting, isn't it? So many of the people that are actually, actually amazing. Honest. Just like the wee girl we talked about last week in the Naaman story, um, we didn't hear her name either, and yet she just was so courageous in speaking up when she could easily have said nothing. Anyway, thank you very much for that, Rory. It's great to, to, to share that together, and we we'll look forward to, uh, to your involvement in the life of our congregations and, and, and the way that develops over time. So thank you very much for taking part this morning. Not far from where I'm standing, up at the top of the hill in Fort William, there is a, a housing area which is known as the plantation. And when you see it from certain angles, perhaps from across at Cool or from up on the Cow Hill Path, the collection of roofs and the shapes in which they sit always somehow remind me of some of those little Galilee villages like Capernaum. Now, I'm not suggesting for one minute that anybody would want to build with mud brick in Loch Aber, 
but there's something about the shape and the overall look of the, the area that just brings to mind stories just like the one we've been talking about today. The story where the friends went up onto the roof of the house by the outside stairs and used that to get their friend in to Jesus when there seemed to be no other way. It's a great story. I absolutely love this story and I think of it often. When we were speaking about it earlier, Rory mentioned to me a podcast which a number of British Army chaplains put together called God's Gym and one in particular where two of the chaplains were speaking about some of the fitness activities that are a regular part of training within the forces. Uh, one of those is a log carry where six people will be carrying a log over rough ground to get to a certain objective as quickly as they can. And the two chaplains speaking were talking about the fact that the men doing that particular activity or women have to be ready to cooperate. They have to work together. Sometimes they have to change places as one person gets tired or a particular set of muscles gets sore to even up the strain. So that different people are taking more of the weight at different times. They've got to work together as a team to achieve the objective. And there's something of that in the story that we read today. Yet again, we have a story where we don't know anybody's names, but the man who had been paralyzed and who was lying on a stretcher can only go to Jesus if his friends help him. And his four friends can only take him if they work together. People in this area who've been part of mountain rescue know just how challenging it is to stretch or someone off a hillside, particularly when there's not a helicopter in the area or the, or the terrain isn't right. But these four friends are absolutely determined. Nothing is going to stop them from getting their friend to Jesus when they think that Jesus can help. And so they persuade him that they're taking him. They carry him through the streets, no doubt a bumpy journey, no doubt a few shouts and curses and complaints to each other on the way across. But by working together, by cooperating, they get their friend to the house where Jesus is. And then it all looks like it's been a waste of time because the house is crowded so full that there is no possibility of manoeuvring a man on a stretcher through the door or getting anywhere near the front of the crowd until they have a bright idea. The flat houses of a village like Capernaum had stairs up the side and that flat roof was pretty much an extra living space for most purposes. So they managed to get their friend up the outside stairs and onto the roof. And they start to dig through the mud, clay and straw that would have been baked hard to make the roof. You can imagine people inside, can't you? As bits of ceiling start to fall on their head and as bits of mud and straw are dropping down from above, you can imagine them looking up as they heard the noise, knowing that something was going on, but not quite sure what. And eventually they made a big enough hole that they were able to lower their friend on his stretcher down through the hole. So he arrives right in front of where Jesus was standing, teaching the crowd. What an act of faith and determination by those friends. How committed they must have been. You can guarantee among other things, they knew they were going to have a rebuilding job to do at the end of it because there's no way they would have been allowed to walk away and leave the damage that they'd had to cause to get their friend in. But one thing and one thing only mattered, their friend needed Jesus to help and they had to get him there and they did. So when Jesus says to the man who has been lowered into the house, your sins are forgiven because he's admired and recognized his faith. I think he's also recognizing the faith of those four determined friends who refused to be beaten by all the obstacles that were in their path. 
It's interesting, isn't it, that Jesus speaks to the man of forgiveness. He doesn't just assume this man must be here because he wants some sort of physical healing. He's prepared to look at all of him. And if what he needs happens to be that spiritual message of being told he's forgiven, then that's where Jesus starts. His words spark outrage because the teachers of the law uh, start telling the crowd, only God can do that. It's blasphemy for Jesus to say he can forgive sins. And they begin to mumble and murmur. And Jesus says, listen, what's easier? To tell him that his sins are forgiven or to tell him to get up and walk? And he says to the man, stand up, roll up your bed and go. And he does. He is both renewed spiritually and he is renewed physically and he walks out the door a different person because he's met Jesus. So what's in the story for us? First of all I think that from the four friends we learn that those who are determined to make a difference for, for others really can do so. They might have to share the burden. They might have stages when one's stronger than the other. They might have stages where they have to work together in different ways. They might have to be creative in their imagination. But they get the job done because of their love, their care and their faith. And then the story also says to us, whatever it is that might be your obstacle to getting close to Jesus, don't let it stay there. Do what it takes to overcome that obstacle. Rely on whatever help you need because the man on the stretcher wasn't getting there by himself. And together share the journey of faith, which brings forgiveness and hope and renewal for all of us. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer now. Let's pray together. Father God, we give thanks to you for the unstoppable power of friendship that we see in the story we've been sharing. That in their determination to help and to bring their friend close to Jesus, the four unnamed friends showed what a real power love can be. Help us to let that power of love inspire and encourage us in our day-to-day -day living, we pray. Make us the same kind of reliable, determined, consistent friends that these people were. We thank you too that Jesus saw the man as a whole person. Didn't just see his illness or his injury. He saw him as a whole person and he saw different needs that he had and was willing to address all of them. So we thank you for that too. Father God, we pray that you'll be with each one of us in the week that lies ahead. Whatever challenges might be coming for us, whatever opportunities might be coming to be a help and support and encouragement to others, enable us to seize those and to make the best of them. We pray for those whom we know who are ill or going through times of hurt or loss or difficulty, and we seek your blessing on each one of them. And we pray that all those who need to feel strength this week will feel themselves surrounded by your love and also by the support of friends. Father God, we ask for your love, for your strength, for your grace. And hear us as we share together in the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
After the benediction, we're going to hear a piece of music which is just a simple retelling of the story we've been reflecting on. So you might want to use it to think about what this particular story has to say to you. The song is called In Through the Roof. I hope you've enjoyed being part of our worship this week and we look forward to you joining with us again next time. Now go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. I heard my friends shouting in the afternoon heat somebody coming, someone you should meet If I could have walked, I'd have jumped to my feet When I heard that Jesus had come to my street Four of my friends came and picked up my bed Come and meet Jesus, the healer, they said Blind men can see, and the hungry are fed. It wouldn't surprise us if he raised the dead. I came in through the roof, I walked out through the door. I've never been able to do that before, and I found the forgiveness I'd been looking for. When I came through the roof, walked out through the door. We went in the street, and as we got near, we heard voices shouting, we heard people cheer. But the crowd was so thick that we couldn't get near. In my rage and frustration, I choked back a tear. outside the house we knew Jesus was there but there wasn't a space in the crowd anywhere I was stuck on my stretcher the crowd didn't care so we got on the roof by climbing the stair I came in through the roof I walked out through the door I'd never been able to do that before And I found the forgiveness I'd been looking for When I came through the roof and walked out through the door Up on the roof in the heat of the day My friends made a hole in the ceiling of clay then using four ropes, they lowered away And there before Jesus on my stretcher I lay Jesus looked down with a welcoming grin It's so nice to see you, I'm glad you dropped in And because of your faith, I'm forgiving your sin You'd have heard in the silence the drop of a pin I came in through the roof, I walked out through the door I'd never been able to do that before And I found the forgiveness I'd been looking for When I came through the roof, walked out through the door And as I was lying down there on my mat Started to whisper, then openly chat. Who is this upstart, this blasphemous brat? The law teacher said, only God can do that. Jesus held up his hand, there was silence once more. He said, this is what I have authority for. I've forgiven the sins of the man on the floor Now pick up your bedclothes and walk out that door I came in through the roof, I walked out through the door I've never 
never been able to do that before And I found the forgiveness I've been looking for When I came through the roof and walked out through the door I immediately rose and I took up my bed I didn't need carried, I walked out instead The teachers were silent faces were red, I was healed and forgiven, as Jesus had said. I came in through the roof, I walked out through the door, I'd never been able to do that before, and I found the forgiveness.